Hi all, I am Ingo Giver, Assistant Professor at Rajgiri School of Engineering and Technology. I will be covering the Module 4 of Design of Concrete Structures 2, that is Design of Circular Slabs and Domes. The Module 4 consists of the design of circular slabs, simply supported, fixed and partially fixed end conditions and design of domes, spherical and conical domes. Circular slabs need to be provided as roof of a circular hall or a circular footing or slabs in circular water tanks. Circular slabs are like two-way slabs and it is bending in all directions and deflects like a saucer. Consider a point on a circular slab P at a distance R from the center of the circle. And if you see the element, you will have two kinds of bending moments. One is MR, bending moment in the radial causing stresses in the radial direction. And M theta is the circumferential bending moment which causes stresses in the circumferential direction of the slab. And shear force may also be present along the radial direction which is not shown in this figure. The circular slab has radial and circumferential moments which causes stresses in the radial and circumferential directions. So there are two ways of detailing a circular slab. One is the reinforcement is provided in the radial and circumferential direction. So this is the radial direction and in the circumferential direction you provide the reinforcement as rings. So this is the circumferential direction. The problem with this kind of reinforcement detailing is it creates a lot of congestion in the center portion so placing becomes difficult. So a second way of detailing is usually adopted. In this case the reinforcement is placed in the horizontal and vertical directions like a mesh. This is preferred in practice. The moments in a circular slab can be determined using the elastic theory of plates and the derivation is out of scope of this lecture. And in the expressions derived expressions, the Poisson's ratio of concrete is assumed to be zero to obtain a simplified expression, which is reasonably good. Now consider a simply supported slab. This is a simply supported slab with a simply supported edge. Simply supported edge represents maybe the slab is just resting on a brick wall. So in that case, the radial moment MR at any point P can be derived as 3W by 16 into r square minus small r square. r square is the radius of the circular slab and small r is the radial distance from the center to the point P considered. Now the maximum value of this radial moment is at r equal to then r equal to 0 and the value is 3w r square by 16. Here w represent the uniformly distributed load on the circular slab and the minimum value is 0 that happens at r equal to capital R that is the radius of the circular slab that means it is at the support. If you do the variation of the radial moment you see that the maximum moment is at the center 3w r square by 16 and minimum moment is at, this, at 0 and the whole bending moment is sagging moment. Now the next is we have also have the expression for the circumferential moment that is causing stresses in the circumferential direction. Now the maximum value is at the center and the value is when r equal to small r equal to 0. So the value is 3w r square by 16 and minimum value is at the support that is 2w r square by 16 that is also sagging. So if you try to plot the variation it will look like this at support it is 2w r square by 16 and the center it is 3wr squared by 16 and the complete bending moment diagram if you see the sagging in nature that is expected in a simply supported slab and the steel has to be provided at the bottom. Now considering the fixed circular slab the edge of the circular slab is fixed the fixed edge so in this case also we can derive a similar expression mr radial moment can be derived as w by 16 r square minus 3 r square. So the maximum value is at the center so when the r equal to 0. So the value of the maximum radial moment is w r square by 16 and it is sagging moment. 
Now the minimum value is at the support when R equal to capital R. That is MR minimum. That is minus 2WR square by 16. Minus represents hogging moment. So at the support you expect hogging moment. So if you draw the variation of the figure. Maximum value sagging moment plus WR square by 16 at the center. And hogging moment 2WR square by 16 at the supports. And if you see the position of the zero bending moment occurs at a distance of 0.58 R from the center of the circle. Now for getting the circumferential moment, the bending is f theta. That is the expression is W by 16 R square by small r square. So the maximum value of the circumferential moment is again at the center and the value is W R square by 16. And the minimum value is the support and it is 0. So if we again draw the plot, the maximum value W R square by 16 at the center and the minimum value is 0 at the supports. So this is the variation of the circumferential bending moment at C for the case of a fixed circular. Now coming to the partially fixed circular slab, in this case also a similar expression can be derived and similar variation can be obtained. The maximum sagging moment is at the center 2 WR square by 16 and the maximum hogging moment is at the support WR square by 16 minus represent hogging. And in case of the circumferential bending moment m theta, the expression is W by 16 2 R square minus R square. Again, the variation can be plotted. The maximum circumferential bending moment is 2 W R square by 16 and minimum value is the support that is 2 W R square by 16. To summarize the moments in a circular slab, you have two types of moments, radial moment and circumferential moment. And at the center and support, you have different values. And there are three types of slabs, simply supported, fixed and partially fixed. So all the maximum values are given in the tableau column which we already discussed. And it's also important to note that there is also a shear force at the support that is always WR by 2 for the all the cases. Simply supported, fixed and partially fixed. If you draw the uh, shear force diagram, it will be not like this. And the maximum value of shear force is at the support and the value is W R by 2. Here the W represent the uniformly distributed load on the circular slab. Now let's do a problem that is design a simply supported slab carrying a superimposed load of 4 kN per meter square and the diameter of the circular slab is 5 meter. Use M20 concrete and FE415 steel. The first step is to fix the depth of the slab that is can be approximately fixed as R by 20, R is the radius of the circular slab. Now the radius of the circular slab is a diameter by 2, so that is 2500 mm divided by 20, that comes to 125 mm. So let us provide the depth of the slab as 125 mm. Then now the next step is you have to calculate the load on the slab. First is the dead load of the slab. Dead load of the slab can be calculated by 25 into D. 25 is the unit weight of concrete. So 25, that is in kilonewton per meter cube. So D is 125 mm. You convert into meter. So it is 0.125 meter. So the value you get is 3.125 kilonewton per meter square. And the total load W will be equal to the dead load plus live load and the dead load is 3.125 and the live load superimposed load is given as 4 kN per meter square. The total is 7.125 kN per meter square. Now factor load. Factor load is you have to multiply with the load factor that is 1.5 is a load factor into 7.125 that comes to 10.5. 7 kN per meter square. Now next step is you have to calculate the bending moments. Factor bending moments. Since we have already factored the load, you can calculate the factor bending moments. Radial and the circumferential bending moment. The radial bending moment maximum is at the center. That is, it is a simply supported slab. So the expression for the radial moment, bending moment is 3 W R squared by 16. So 3 into, now the W, you take it as a factor load 
10.7 into radius is 2.5 meters square divided by 16. And the value you get is 12.54 kilonewton meter. And the radius bending moment at support is 0. We know that. And the maximum circumferential uh, bending moment at the center that is uh, 3wr square by 16 again this is the same expression so you get the same value 12.54 kilonewton meter now the circumferential bending with the support that is sagging again that is plus 2wr square by 16 so 2 into 10.7 divided into 2.5 square by 16 that is you get a value of 8.36 kilonewton, 3.6 kilonewton meter per meter. Okay. Next step is for depth check. For depth check, you have to do D should be greater than provided. Effective depth should be greater than equal to root of mu by rub. We already know that ru is equal to 2.76 for m20 concrete. So when we write the mu, we will take the largest moment out of MR and M theta, whichever is largest, whatever we got is 12.54 and would convert into Newton mm, that is into 10 raised to 6, divided by RU is 2.76 for M20 concrete into B, B is 1000 mm, you are calculating it for 1 meter width. So the value you get is 67.5. 4 mm. Now the provided effective depth is the total depth. Total depth is minus cover minus diameter by 2. The total depth we provided is 125 and cover let us assume 20 mm assuming mild exposure conditions and minus the diameter by 2 diameter let us assume 10 mm diameter so 10 by 2. So the value you get is 100 mm effective depth. So the D provided is greater than the 64 67.4. So that 100 is greater than 67.4. So we are safe. Now the next step is calculation of area of steel. So we know that at the center the MR and M theta are equal. So we can what is the value of MR and M theta? We got it as 12.54 kilonewton meter. So from that we can calculate the area of steel using this expression given in annex T of IS 056. So uh, otherwise you can use SP16. Now right now I'll use the SP16. For SP16 you have to find MU by BD square. So for finding MU by BD square, 12.54 you convert into Newton mm divided by B is for thousand for thousand for one meter you're calculating so into by thousand into d d provided is d provided you have to take that is 100 mm we calculated 100 square so the value is 1.254 so corresponding to this you can go to the page 48 of sp16 and you can get the percentage of steel required that is approximately 0.38 0.38 percent so you can calculate the area of steel as 50 into bd by 100 and here the pt is uh, so you get about 380 mm area of steel now you calculate for the once you get the area of steel now you calculate the diameter and the spacing you have assumed the 10 mm diameter so corresponding to that you find the spacing so that is uh, spacing will be 1000 into 1000 is 1000 mm that is the 1 meter width of the slab area of 1 bar divided by area of steel that is 1000 into area of 1 bar is uh, pi by 4 into 10 square divided by area of steel is 8, 380 that comes to 206 so provide provide 10 mm dia at 200 mm 
spacing. Now next step is you calculate the minimum steel. Okay, so what is the minimum steel? Minimum steel for slabs is 0.12%. So what is 0.12%? Uh, so minimum steel, AST minimum is 0.12%. That is 0.12 by 100 into BD. B is 1000 into D capital D. That is 125. That comes to 150 mm square. So the provided area of steel is more than this minimum steel. So provide 8 mm, uh, 10 mm at 200 mm center to center in both the directions. By both the directions, we have MR equal to M theta. Both in the radial direction and the uh, circumferential direction, it's the same bending moment. So you can give, provide 10 mm dia at 200 mm spacing in both the direction. Now next step is um, circumferential bending moment uh, at the support. Let us do for the same thing for the support. So in support, the bending moment is the circumferential bending moment is 2 WR squared by 16. So two, uh, we already calculated that. That comes to 8.36 kilonewton meter. Now you calculate the corresponding steel using MU by BD square from SP16 or you can use this Quadratic, you can use this equation and solve the quadratic equation. So you get mu by bd square as 0.836 and corresponding to that pt is 0.245 and corresponding to that area of steel is 245 mm square. Okay, now for this you have to give us rings. This is at the support and this is for the circumferential moment. So we have to give it as rings. So to calculate the number of rings, you calculate the number of rings, number of rings will be equal to the total area of steel 245 by area of 1 bar. That is you assume 10 mm diameter then you get uh, rings of 4 rings. That is near the support you have to give 4 rings and this 4 rings should be provided within a distance of 2 LD by 3 from the support edge. Now next step is the shear for shear. We know the maximum shear force occurs at the support and the value is W U R by 2. So now let us calculate V U. V U is W U R by 2. W U is 10.7 that is the factor load into R by 2. R is 2.5 squared by 2 and the value comes to 30.37 kN. And now let's calculate the shear stress. Shear stress tau V is VU by BD. That is 13.37 into 1000 converted into Newton divided by B 1000 into D 100. So the value is 0.134 Newton per mm square. Now the next step is you calculate tau C from table 20, 19 of IS456 that comes to around 0.4 Newton per mm squared. So it is tau V is less than tau C. So it is safe in shear. Now we'll do the detailing of the slab. First we'll see the bottom plan of the circular slab. We have provided a 10 mm dia 200 mm spacing in the horizontal and vertical direction for taking care of the circumferential and the maximum circumferential and the radial moment. So this is the provided like a mesh. So that is 10 mm at 200 mm center to center and also the vertical reinforcement was also 10 mm at 200 mm center to center. Okay. Now we have also provided the rings and the circumferential for taking care of the circumferential moments. Okay. So this is the rings on the near to the support. So there are four rings of 10 mm diameter we provided for taking the circumferential moments near the support. So these are the four rings. So 
so mark it four rings of 10 mm diameter okay now next is uh, this ring should be provided within a distance of 2 by 3 ld that is 2 by 3 into development length that is about 320 now let's see the top plan in the top plan even though we don't have any hogging moment throughout we need to provide some hogging moment near the support in the radial direction actually this is to take care of some of the partial fixity of the support even though simply supported moment uh, support does not have any moment the moment is zero due to practically it is not able not possible to provide a perfect simply support so there will be some hogging moment that is developed take care of that we need to provide a radial direction top steel top steel like this and to tie this reinforcement you may have to provide a circular ring reinforcement also near the support so this radial reinforcement can be nominal steel minimum reinforcement that is it comes to around 8 mm dia at 300 mm center to center now let's draw a sectional view of the slab also so this is a sectional view you can see the total depth the depth we have provided is 125 mm and uh, first as we have provided a uh, reinforcement in both horizontal and vertical directions that is 8 mm uh, no sorry 10 mm at Two hundred mm, center to center. Okay. Now we have provided rings, four rings of ten mm diameter near the support. So this is a four rings. Also we have provided. So you can see four rings of ten mm diameter. Okay. Now we can see this top steel also. This is the top steel also we have provided. You can just insert it inside also. The top steel. This top steel uh, we have provided up to a distance. This distance can be. Uh, this distance can be about 0.15 times the diameter. That comes to around 750 mm. 